My name is Chris, and today I'm gonna to show you how I built this porch covering. I'll take you through every design decision I made, show you every step I took in the building process, and show you how much I paid for all the materials. I'm not gonna cover anything foundation related in this video. I made a separate video covering how I would calculate footing size for a project like this. And if you can't already tell, we're actually replacing an old porch covering that we tore down. So we're gonna reuse the existing foundation. The first thing I did is mock up the structure with clamps. That way we could walk all the way around and see exactly what it would look like from any angle and any distance. It's a good thing we did that because we ended up moving the ledger attachment to the house up a few feet because we didn't really like the way the structure looked from the road. I treated this like a ledger board for a deck. It's not gonna support foot traffic, but it is gonna support loads from a roof. The building code lays out what kind of fasteners you need and where they go for a ledger board attachment under a variety of conditions. We used these five inch ledger lock lag screws and fastened them into the house framing in accordance with the schedule provided in the code. The lag screws were about a dollar a piece and we bought a 50 count box. For the ledger board itself, we used number one grade cedar tone pine and 16 feet of that costs us 20 bucks. We checked level against the house like 10 times, so I promise it's level. The original siding looked like it was a little crooked, and this old house is definitely leaning a bit. When this project is finished, they're having new siding installed to include flashing around the porch, so we confirmed with the siding company that they'll be able to use the porch roof as their guide for this wall. The next step is to lay out our post bases. We got these post bases off Amazon, I couldn't really find any details around US code compliance, but they seemed pretty sturdy. They had a little gap on the bottom to elevate the post and keep it away from the ground and any water passing underneath. They also came with concrete anchor bolts to connect it to the foundation and screws to secure the bottom of the post. I didn't get close up footage of installing the anchor bolts, but we just drilled holes with a hammer drill using a masonry bit pounded in the anchor bolts, and tightened them down with a socket wrench. Altogether, these post bases cost 70 bucks. The opening for the posts were five and a half inches, and our rough sawn cedar posts were closer to five and three quarters, so we had to router and trim down the ends to fit. For layout, we obviously wanted to keep the roof square to the house, but our slab was nowhere near square, so we just did the best we could. I'm not aware of many rules in the code around post sizing, I think because it really depends on the tributary area of the roof load being transferred to the footing through each post. I know they need to be at least 4x4, and compression strength ratings are available for most species of lumber. The tributary area for each post is roughly half the porch depth multiplied by the space in between each post. We can multiply that area by our snow load to get the total load each post will need to bear. The snow load in our area is 20 pounds per square foot, so we can illustrate that with a 20 pound weight for every square foot of roof. About half the load from the porch roof is transferred to the house foundation through the ledger attachment. The remaining load can be divided up into three loads, one for each post. This is gonna be our live load. To find our dead load, we can add up the weight of the materials above each post. Let's call our total load for this post 400 pounds. Luckily, regardless of the species, timber has a very high compressive strength. So these 6x6 cedar posts are going to hold up just fine under the load from the small roof. Each post cost about 115 bucks, so we paid $345 in total for posts. The next step is to install the beam. There's a convenient table in the building code called girder spans for open porches. The beam under our shed roof is a girder because it will support rafters in the roof. The snow load in my location is 20 pounds per square foot, so we can use 30 PSF in the table. Our porch is roughly six feet deep, and we know our longest span between posts is 10 feet, so this table tells us we need a double two by eight beam using number two grade lumber. The beam size is important because if it's undersized, the roof load could cause deflection over time. 
ultimately we didn't like the way a two by eight beam was going to look. And I knew since we we're using number one grade lumber and our porch was only six feet deep that we could get away with installing a double two by six beam instead. My father-in-law is an arborist by trade, so he was comfortable notching the post with a chainsaw from a ladder. We fastened the beam together with GRK RSS screws, a box of those cost 20 bucks, and attach it to the post with four six inch timber lock structural lag screws by Fastenmaster. A box of those cost $35. Now it's time to install rafters. I used the rafter span table in the IRC to find that we could use number one grade pine two by fours if we spaced them 16 inches on center. I used two by four hangers with 10D and 16D nails to attach the rafters to the ledger board. Each one of those cost $2. For the rafter to beam connection, I used the same six inch timber lock screws from before. These are advertised as a hurricane tie replacement for a truss to top plate connection when they're installed correctly. I installed them from the top instead of going up through the beam like they recommend because I didn't want to see them from under the porch. I had to lay out and mark each rafter individually because nothing about this house was square. The bird's mouth cut for each rafter to beam connection needed to be a slightly different location on each rafter. The best thing we could do is plumb and level what we could and just work with what we had. I also let the rafter tails run wild for that same reason so I could snap a line and cut them all off straight once they were all in place. Rafters cost $9 a piece and we bought 13 of them. Then I moved on to add three rows of blocking between the rafters. Blocking does a few things here. First, it stiffens up the rafters and adds strength to the roof, and second, it gives us straight lines to screw our roof panels to. I used exterior grade screws at angles like this to install the blocking in straight lines. I tried to use the nailer, but believe it or not, screws ended up being faster. Total blocking lumber cost was 50 bucks, and a big box of screws was $30. Finally, I cut all the rafter tails in a straight line and added a fascia board with two exterior wood screws for each rafter connection. The fascia board cost 20 bucks. At this point, the porch is framed, but it's still weak in this one direction. To fix that, all we have to do is install the metal roof. In this case, each roof screw acts like a brace, holding the entire structure to the house. We went with ribbed steel roof panels to match the house roof, and those are pretty straightforward to install. The first few panels always take the longest because we quickly find out exactly how square the roof is. Unfortunately, my camera's about to die while I'm putting these panels on, but I have a whole video dedicated to how I install these roof panels on my channel. Each panel costs $30 and the screws cost $44. Now all we have to do is install the railing. We use cedar lumber for the railing and it's close to 10 feet long which is wider than the recommended span without reinforcement. This is what they wanted to install and I'll have access to this property for a long time so I'll be able to keep track of any sagging and fix that if that happens. We use cedar boards for the railing, those cost $53 and the spindles cost 90 bucks. We finished it with a Minwax stain and that cost $43.
I spent a ton of time making the animation for this project in Blender, so here is the full uninterrupted rendering. 